he wants to have the last slot. So, when we got the last slot, me and Vignesh were discussing what should we really be presenting, because we would be already talking to the AI gurus, enough would have been said about AI and we will have to keep it light, because presentation would not work. Half of them would already be asleep. So, we decided to do a bit of demo and just a few slides. So, we thought about a topic which is which is light, not relevant only to AI, but the overall ecosystem of networking and that is monitoring of networks. Now, you would say why is this AIML inserted in the uh, monitoring? That is because I wanted to have a slot here. <laughs> so, I, I was told that if you do not put AIML, it is unlikely you will get a slot. So, I said let me put AIML, right. But I will I will be true, I will I have one slide on AIML. So, <laughs> okay. So, this is the high level agenda and what I plan to talk about today is a key monitoring feature which is mirror on drop. And what we are doing with mirror on drop is very simple. Uh, with the help of Broadcom Silicon, before we drop a packet, we take the headers of the packet and send it to a collector with a drop code. And that drop code will give you the reason why the packet was dropped. So, how does it help? Now, assume that there is no mirror on drop like it has always been for us and you are working for an e-commerce player and suddenly for 15 minutes your portal is slow or kind of not working. What would happen? Your customers will not stay on your portal, they will simply go to another e-commerce portal and start buying. That is a loss of millions, billions, I do not know how many dollars, I am an engineer. So, uh, what do you do? As soon as something like this happens, your CEO calls up your CTO and tells him, boss, our portal is not working. And then you have a superman who comes out. Uh, he is called something like a big event manager kind of a thing, critical incident manager, right. So, the critical incident manager then sets up a war room and you have the network guy walking in, you have a compute guy walking in and then, hey, hi Samir, we will not miss the storage guy as well. We have a storage guy walking in as well. And then it all this takes like 15 to 20 minutes, right, for them to assemble. Somebody was having his coffee and he kept his coffee, came running in the war room. All this took like 20 minutes. And then the problem disappears, right. It, it was intermittent. What do you do? They sit in the war room for the next two hours thinking that the problem will reoccur, but it does not. So, the next day morning, CEO calls all of these guys in the meeting room and tells them, boss, do you know how much did we lose, lose in this 15 minutes? And they are like, no. He gives a number. They are like, okay, this is big. And the CEO questions, do you guys know what happened? And they were like, no, we do not really know what happened. Do you think this will reoccur? Not really sure. And they are all asked to get lost. Now, imagine a scenario and then we have all been privy to such situations, right? And I am not saying that with this solution, this 
these kind of situations will not occur, but if you have a good monitoring system in place, it really helps. So, what is that we do with mirror and drop? So, we are just trying to make life simple for network engineers. As I said, before I drop a packet, I, I mean the Broadcom switch, right? It puts a drop code and sends it to the collector. Now, that drop code defines why exactly a packet was dropped. Now, it can be because the source and the destination IP of a packet was the same. Somebody was playing uh, with the packets, man in middle attack. You do not need to forward such packets in your network, right? You are just killing bandwidth, not doing anything. Or there was a packet which came with a tag which was never configured on the switch. So, there can be n number of reasons. So, you can list down the reasons for why you need packets to be dropped and send it to the collector. So, how this will help you? Now, assume that uh, you are you are running an application, the same the same application which we are talking about, the financial organization, right? If if or or the e-commerce uh, organization. So, if there are packets being dropped for sending because they were sent with a tag which was never present on the switch. So, if you manage this proactively what happens is the switch I mean the collector tells you before the application owners actually tell you the collector tells you that boss your packets for this destination are being dropped because the VLAN is not configured in the switch. So, you have a much proactive approach then then a reactive one right so it helps saves uh, sa saves dollars for the companies for i mean for aiml this is that one slide that i was talking about i i i have it right so for aiml uh, all what i understand so far is every gpu in some or the other way has to talk to all the GPUs in the cluster. And only after all of them talk to each other, there is a job which is completed. And that is the performance metrics for an AIML workload, job completion type. Now, one of my friend, I guess it was from Avis, was showing a ring topology that a GPU 1 talks to GPU 2, 2 talks to 3 and then they all pass on the gradients and only then the job is completed. Now, imagine that there is a packet loss between GPU 1 and GPU 2. All the other GPUs are still waiting right? because it is a circle unless the first guy finishes talking to the second guy, they cannot move on. right? You have GPUs where you have spent thousands and millions of dollars, they are just waiting. And this is where mirror on drop comes in, because as soon as a single packet is dropped, you know the reason why it is being dropped. right? So, it gives, it saves a lot of time and time saved is dollar saved. right? So, yeah, this, this picture uh, kind of articulates this, right? For an AIML workload, one guy finishing the race does not help, all of them have to finish, and this is why I put in this picture. Uh, we have done some optimizations to this. So, we do not send every packet which is being dropped, we send flows, and the first packet of the flow is sent to the collector and the other packets are suppressed. So, this is one optimization which we have done with mirror and drop. So, that you do not have a lot of false alerts, right? I mean you have only what you need and you can focus on what is needed. What we are doing is 
this is actually being a lot of this is like a lot of customers of ours are asking for these things and we are getting more and more granular with this. So, what we have done is with our newest silicon, uh, we have kind of 10x uh, the kind of drop codes that we have making it more and more granular. So, that you know it is easier for everyone to understand why this packet was dropped. So, this is a demo setup uh, where I am using everything which Amir did not want me to use. So, this is an open source kind of a setup wherein uh, we are using telegraph as a parser for all the drop packets. Uh, we put it in the influx DB and then we are using Grafana dashboard, but this, this is not the only solution. We have a lot of commercial collectors which are available where you can see the drop packets and one of them is actually coming from uh, Amir which is beyond edge. Right? We will have it in November if I am not wrong right Amir. So, this is the open source way of doing it and then we also have commercial collectors available like one of them as I said beyond edge where you can see why the packet was dropped, when it was dropped right. All, all, all the details that you need will be made available. Uh, what I have done is just to kind of show a quick glimpse of this, I asked one of my friend uh, was Kamran, he is based out of uh, Europe to do a recording of the same. Uh, thanks to him, he has, he has put in a video, uh, it is just a short video, we will see the short video on you know all what I spoke so far. Can I have the video? How do I turn this on? Yeah, I think it on. Yeah. Better on drop or mod provides you real time drop monitoring for your business critical application. Mirror on drop or mod is a Broadcom silicon feature that allows real time drop monitoring for your business critical applications. Mod tells you what is impacted, so which application and user group is impacted. It tells you where the packet drop is happening, so it tells you exactly the switch ID where the packet drop is happening and it tells you why the packet drop is happening, so it gives you a drop reason. So, mirror on drop, it provides your operations team with real actionable insight so that they can very quickly root cause and fix a packet drop problem. And this is all the configuration you need to configure mod on your enterprise sonic switch. I want to show you my lab setup. So what you see in the middle here, this is a graphical representation of the open source collector I was talking about. You can see it comprises four modules. Each of this, these modules is open source, as you can imagine. So, this packet RX app, this is basically an input plugin in Telegraph. This plugin allows Telegraph to decode mod messages and understand the various metrics provided. Telegraph is our data collector agent. Uh, InfluxDB, I'm sure you all know, this is the database that we're using here, open source once again. And Grafana is our visualization tool. So I'll show you, we have created a specific dashboard in Grafana, which is used to display all these mod metrics. Um, on the network side, uh, in my lab, basically I have these switches, uh, which are based on Broadcom Silicon. Uh, there are different type of Broadcom Silicon, which can support uh, mod, mirror on drop feature, uh, Trident, Tomahawk, Jericho and so on. In this particular lab, I am using Trident 3 based switches for my demo. I am running this open source collector on a Linux machine in the lab and I will be generating some uh, traffic which is defined as interesting traffic on my switch. The switch will drop those messages and then we will see on the uh, Grafana dashboard why those messages were dropped. 
So this is the Grafana dashboard I was talking about. Some of the important fields here. So this chart will show us total active drops, how many flows are being dropped at this point. This chart will show us how many switches are reporting the drop. And this drop anomaly percentage, this is basically how many drops you are seeing compared to your baseline. And your baseline is the number of drops you have seen over a period of time. And this period of time can be defined. Um, you can choose period of time from this uh, drop down menu and it can be a few hours, months, or years. In my case, because it's a lab, I'm just choosing five minutes. And this current drop, this is the section where we will see what are the drops happening. And in the history of the drops, historical uh, drops table, you will see what drops were seen in the past. I will send, first traffic that I'm going to send, it will be its definition will be that it will have the same source and destination IP. What type of traffic is which has the same source and destination IP? Answer is it's not a legitimate traffic, right? So this is basically a definition of a DOS attack. So Broadcom Silicon is going to identify that, look, source IP is equal to destination IP. This is some dodgy traffic. I'm going to drop it. Once the traffic is dropped, because this is interesting traffic, because it is, it falls in the same um, destination subnet that I defined on my switch. So this is interesting traffic or business critical traffic for my switch. A mod message will be generated when the packets are dropped and we will see it here. So there we go. I am going to send this traffic now. So packets are being sent and we can see that one active drop is there, one switch is reporting, and there we go. This is the information we are getting from the mod message. Right? So this is the switch ID. It tells me the protocol number, source and destination IP, port numbers, and very important, it tells me the drop reason, why that packet drop is happening, because this is the definition of a DOS attack. And you can see source IP. We can see in the historical data, the source IP is equal to destination IP. So this is not legitimate traffic. That is why the traffic was dropped. Okay, now send the second type of traffic. Uh, the second traffic that I have defined here, second flow that I have defined here, it's not illegitimate traffic. It's valid traffic, but it is be, will it will be sent for a VLAN which has not been configured on the switch. So there is missing configuration. And this is a type of problem which can happen in any network, right? You can just forget to configure a VLAN on one of the switch. And, um, or, you know, during a change, you erroneously uh, just um, deleted that VLAN. So this is a human error uh, problem which can happen in any network. So let's simulate that problem here. And there you go. It tells us that there is another packet drop happening. So now there are two type of packet drops happening. And the second one is unknown VLAN ID. Right? So go, you know exactly where the packet drop is happening. So you have the switch ID information. And now you know the drop reason as well. So now your operations team can look at it. And they, they will know exactly where to go and how to fix this problem. Hopefully you can see this is a valuable feature. And hopefully now you understand how to configure this on Enterprise Sonic. So, thanks to my colleague Kamaran who did this recording for me. Now, with our newest silicon, uh, which is Tomahawk 5, we support 10x times the more drop codes that we used to support with our previous silicons. We are now supporting roughly 150 drop codes. So you would have much more granular insights on why the packets are being dropped. Now what we have realized is no matter how good a technology we develop, we need 
the guys who understand the end customer requirement and deliver this technology on the ground. That is where we partner with good system integrators. And I have Palsi with me, I will hand it over to Vignesh, who we believe do a fantastic job when it comes to Sonic. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chetan. Thanks for the amazing talk. Yeah. Uh, we at Palsi Networks, for the past eight years, have been working on this open disaggregated network, networking and providing software development and services support to our customers. All the tier one companies, we have been providing software services. Over the past five years, we are predominantly working with Sonic and working with organizations like Broadcom, Edgecore, and Ufi Space, and building applications on top of Sonic and taking it to deploy, uh, data center and de beyond data center deployments. Uh, our main focus has been to help the customers to adopt to Sonic. Though we have talked about multiple features in today that, that Sonic has, despite having all good features, there are some challenges when we take Sonic to the customers and take it to the adoption. Few challenges are mainly, uh, predominantly in India we see this, where uh, the customer asks for a dedicated 24 cross 7 support, which, which few of us are providing, and, uh, but, but that might be dedicated only to the orchestration or that might be dedicated to the hardware. It could be 8 cross 5 support or it could be a 24. But what customers are expecting is a 24 cross 7 support always to be there on their back to support them once it goes, if something goes wrong, we should be always be there to support them. And they have a very huge existing in IT infrastructure integrated with multiple tools for which they expect the same things to work with Sonic as well. And multiple hardware compatibility issues and feature parity. This is one of the common questions which we come when we go and pitch Sonic to any customer, data center guys, they just, okay, uh, they take, okay, in Cisco or Juniper, we have hundreds of features. Do you have all these things? In Sonic, it doesn't, it is not there. So they, they come to a conclusion that Sonic is not mature and it cannot be used for deployments. And the other fear is on the documentation and the learning curve involved in mastering this new OS and the developing the skill set needed for this to take Sonic into adoption. Apart from all these technical challenges, one of the major challenge which we see is all these customers seek a aggregated solution in this disaggregated space. So th that's where Palsy, our scope in this, or our vision or our scope in this Sonic is to act as an aggregator in the disaggregated space. We have built a very strong collaboration with various vendors, hardware vendors, Edgecore, UFI Space, Celestica, Marvel, and different NOS vendors like Broadcom, Sonic, Edgecore Sonic, and also Community Sonic, and various chipsets from Broadcom and Marvel. And of late, we are working very closely with orchestration vendors like Beyond Edge, Hedgehog, Avis, and building this kind of an ecosystem so that we give all the flexibility to the customer to choose what they want, and which will help them to take it into adoption. So when we show Sonic, the first thing they ask is, do we have a nice GUI? Do we have, we, will we be able to orchestrate it? How do I automate it? In that case, we are, the orchestration comes into play and it really helps us to position Sonic and take it to the next level. To simplify this journey, uh, what we have come up with, Palsy, is providing a kind of Sonic NetPro as a solution, a support, with three different flavors, a ready suit, deploy suit, and a sustain suit. So we, we act, will be like a single point of contact for the customers, whoever wants to deploy Sonic. We take care of from, from the ready phase to the sustenance phase. In case of ready, we take, uh, this is the very initial phase where we talk to the customer, try to understand their current deployment, what is that they want to do, and do a POC with, doing a POC really helps them to understand what kind of features that Sonic has, and it will help them to know, see that, okay, the same eVPN, VXLAN, whatever they are doing with the traditional OS, that can be achieved. That's the confidence that they get once they see the POC. And we provide all the pre-deployment and post-deployment support, and also doing, help them in doing a proper vendor selections from the hardware, also from the orchestrator, from the chip, which will suit them. So that, that, that we provide as part of the ready suit. Uh, and as part of the deploy, it's starting from the rack and stack to the day zero, day one, all the implementation we provide. 
and as part of the sustenance, we have a complete 24 cross 7 support tag running from India, which provides a cost effective solution and also maintain their network and give regular updates, which will help them to know the, what they are currently doing, having with the traditional OEMs, they will be able to achieve the same thing using the Sonic as well. So with this system, currently we are running POX in India with uh, few system integrators and also few uh, larger deployments which are box are going on in via hopefully within the next couple of weeks we will come to know the real deployments happening in the financial sectors in india uh, probably in the next summit when we come we can come up with uh, the, the actual deployments and what kind of how did we take it and all that probably we can show it in the next things and all the ai things that we have sp spoken i think it will help us to take Sonic to the next level and adapt, make customers adapt it. We are, we, at, as a Palsy, at Palsy, we are open to work with everyone in this community and take Sonic to the next level. So yeah, that's what we are offering. Thank you. Any questions? Any question? Anyone? Hi, Chintan. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. So, uh, in your presentation, video presentation, uh, you were showing the example of a trident uh, where you explained the drop reason to be displayed using that AA fabric. Right. So, I just want to understand, for example, uh, a bit in deep depth. So is it like the basic uh, receive debug counter, what are they providing on the Broadcom, for example, what Trident is offering, for example, it's a kind of 64-bit counter. So for each one, we have a drop code. So only those drop codes which are supported by those, that chipset Trident, you will be uh, redirecting to the, uh, the display kind of thing and showing. Or is it some advanced level or any other drop codes apart from that uh, RDBGC counters, whatever you are providing in the Trident? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So what we have done is, as I said, for Tomahawk 5, we have 150 drop codes. So we at Broadcom understand you know, different use cases for different silicon. And Tomahawk 5 has much more drop codes because of the application of Tomahawk 5, right? Trident 3x7 is something which we know would be mostly limited to the leaves. So the use cases or the drop codes are defined as per the use case which that chip would be used for. So Tomahawk 5 we know it will be mostly for AML or generally a spine or a super spine. And the kind of drop codes which are relevant to these use cases are built in to that chipset. So based on the use, to answer your question, based on the use case, we define, okay, these are the drop codes which should be supported on this silicon and these are the uh, drop codes which should be supported on the other silicon. So Did I answer your question? Yeah, yes, um, but uh, it is like kind of proportionate, whatever we are getting on the, bro if you are going and debugging on the chip, so those drop code will be proportionate in the uh, same way what you are displaying in with your AI technology. Yeah, so there is a list of drop codes which is supported per silicon and that is like predefined by us. Thank you. Yeah. One question. So, uh, when the packet gets dropped, means it can be dropped based on buffer. There is no not available to buffer, right? Mm. So, whether we allocate a separate buffer for this MOD to some because consider if, if it is completely drained, all the buffers are used. How this MOD will be generated? Whether we allocate a separate uh, minimal buffer and then we'll support this feature. Whether we need that configuration for that? Yes. So whether it is similar to DCN which is supported in Tomahawk 5? Sorry? The drop congestion notification which is supported in Tomahawk 5? That is something different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, I have a question, sir. Hi. Ah, here. Hi. Okay. So um, we, when you mentioned about the packet drop, you basically showed example of the clause network itself. So when it comes to encrypted traffic or maybe a VPN traffic, right? Does this solution works there as well, like um, analysis of the header and then with the base out of the defined error codes or sorry, drop codes? Um, uh, does it do the same way or no? Absolutely. So 
when you talk about encrypted traffic, what you are encrypting is the payload. Payload, yes. yes. And not the headers. Yes. What we are doing is just copying the headers, putting the drop code and sending it. Okay, so, so just the basically headers are anyways not encrypted. Right, right, right. right. Okay, got it. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you for giving Thanks. me a patient listening, despite of me being the last speaker. I see the time is out. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We will take, uh, if anybody would like to take, take a five minute break. We are waiting for Charu. She is coming uh, from her room. She will be closing the event with Percy. So if you guys want to take any uh, five minute break, you can take. Or if you can wait, just wait for like five minutes and it will start. <laughs>